Well, I made some blow-ups of the uh, foot here uh, from the photographs that I took at Yale. And this one here is about to scale. As you can see, it's reasonably uh, close. So I can uh, copy uh, measurements off of that too if I wish. Although I wrote some down on here uh, when I uh, measured them. So the... Uh, the biggest issue there is this toe and you can see um, the various uh, photographs uh, and the curves uh, that it makes it just kind of comes that way uh, real long talons on this uh, uh, a lot longer than I normally uh, make yeah, maybe not but um, Anyway, some nice, nice blopes that should help me uh, figure out how to do it. So, Frank, I made that, cut that out of poplar. So we're going to give it a, a, a start here. I've got to measure it and, uh, and uh, lay it out. I've got them all cut out now so this was the sample that I uh, practiced one that I did earlier and I've cut out now the uh, mahogany blanks but I left the the top on the cut is made so there's just a, a tenon back here that has to be cut off but uh, I think it'll be easier to rotate in the uh, vise with a, a smooth top on it so we'll see how that works out so we're gonna lay them out and start carving well I have them uh, laid out here and uh, the uh, mahogany's are awful dark so it's probably a bit hard to see the lines but this is uh, how we lay out uh, traditional uh, ball and claw feet with the two circles uh, this being the the outside curve or the top of the curve and then this being the inside uh, as you round it over and then uh, half inch uh, across the center here to make the the talons so that's that's very normal there but uh, what I did for this one they're still laid out on the bottom the same way but because uh, the talon on the side is is rolled back or turned back you can see I started here where it normally would go straight down and uh, created a curve that goes back to this point here and likewise uh, the one on the side goes back so uh, they it sweeps back this line here represents where the actual uh, talon will be or the toe or whatever it is after the other material is uh, carved away so um, these are the heights. What I did uh, was I took the uh, the original or the practice ball 
and used a, a molding gauge here uh, like so to since I like that curve and the height uh, of it uh, this matches just so so then I can transfer that height at least to that point and then uh, carve this ball to match that shape so that's what we're going to do so to start to uh, make the ball and claw I make a cylinder first so we have to go all the way around and I'm only on the first side here trying to make it a cylinder across the first line that we drew on the bottom with the compass and this part here is right on the line so maintaining that curve straight back is what we're trying to do here and we'll do that all the way around the ball and we'll know we got it right when the uh, square is on the bottom and it it goes straight back there's no gap in here but there's still a gap so that means this is high and that's low but uh, we're maintaining that curve across here so we'll keep at it until we move it to a new side I'm starting to uh, round over the top of the ball I've got the lower part carved down a bit uh, it, it needs to be a little sharper but the top of the ball is very sharp you practically have to go straight down on it to start to get the curve because it goes in here the top of the ball actually is over over here and so this part is uh, covered by the back talons and uh, so it has to uh, get in there rather sharply <laughs> and, uh, the way I duplicate them is I have my model here that uh, I created and I was reasonably happy with after I played around with it and then I've got this molding gauge here and I put you can see I put that on there and it fits just so and uh, so then when we're carving this we want it to be the same curve so I'll just keep putting this on here until I get that shape well I've got uh, one side done here at least uh, as far as I'm concerned so it's a little low to put the measuring device on so you can see it fits the curve now pretty well so then I started uh, over on this side here and um, you can see we got a little ways to go yet but it's uh, it's getting there well I'm done with the uh, two back sides now and the um, the important thing is that when you look at it from the bottom that you see a continuous line so it looks like it's a continuous ball under as it goes underneath the um, back talon there so um, that's important and then when you sight it you have to sight it from bottom to top and then from top to bottom and it should again look like a continuous ball so uh, now we can start working on the front ones one thing about doing the, these that's different than doing like a Philadelphia is that uh, this toe here turns back and uh, so that makes a large part 
of uh, our larger part of this part of the front ball. So um, it came down here straight uh, before I just carved it off to expose uh, what is truly going to be the, the front ball. So um, I had to do this first before I started on the ball because this is part of the ball down here. So uh, I'll need to do that on this side. Although it's starting back already, it needs to go way back here uh, where the point will be and exposing more of this. Well, I'm about done with the uh, first front balls of the two. And I roughed in this uh, little uh, webbing here uh, to take a look at uh, how the toes would look and uh, the web. And again, uh, this is uh, from the uh, or original practice one and uh, it fits on there pretty good. I did lower it a little bit from the practice one like I said I would and what that did was uh, give me more room in here and the toes are thicker so um, I'm happy with that so far just roughed in so now we'll move over here and uh, do this side so I'm starting to work on uh, the rear toe here <laughs> And um, I have <coughs> done an acceptable one here on the, the practice piece. So um, what's different about these than normal is that uh, they're round and they have these bulbs, uh, I guess, would be uh, where the talon starts out. And they're rounded over. There's no shelf uh, between this and uh, where the toe begins so it rounds down <coughs> and it rounds in and so it's, they're like two little knobs and uh, I'm trying to reproduce that so maybe this uh, eagle that we're making here had arthritis. Well, now that uh, most of the carving is uh, out of the way, it, I've got to clean up the uh, cabriolet leg, which is a bit short. And you can see I also cut the, the top off of it. Uh, so we're, all we have on here is just the uh, tenon that's gonna go in the bottom. And the reason I did that is so that I could use the spoke shave without bumping into that top. And uh, as usual, it does a good job of uh, smoothing over the chatter marks from uh, band sawing and uh, makes it nice and smooth. You can see also I have used a file to uh, start to round over the corners uh, a little bit down here. So this area again uh, is almost round and on the photograph of the uh, legs that uh, are on the piece, this area appears quite sharp. So um, you know it won't be any rounding over up there, but uh, we got to get it rounded over here. So. Uh, I can use the spoke shave both directions, pull or push, and the uh, mahogany is pretty easy to work. And I've got it set to taking off a pretty fine shaving here. So a little more to clean it up. Well, I got one done here. You can see there's the model 
and um, this is of course the mahogany and uh, I did um, widen this a little bit uh, that was too thin and uh, the web came out about the same um, the ball is the same it's um, curved back here but I think I'd like it curved back a little more yet so we'll work on that for the second one so this could be a back foot um, but anyway one done and uh, three more to go